Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. Talking about fair housing in Tennessee, we have with us Donna Duart, uh, Director of Civil Rights Compliance with Tennessee Housing Development Agency. Um, a couple of calls here. Let's go to Dorothy. Hello, Dorothy. Dorothy, are you there? Hello, Dorothy. All right, we'll come back to you if you're there. There's a study right about veterans right um, and their access to housing that I think is interesting what what about that study okay um, if you are free on April the 7th um, I'd like to invite you to the 2016 Tennessee Fair Housing Matters Conference at the Nashville Airport Marriott one of the feature speakers there will be Dr. Louis Woods from MTSU and he will be talking about fair housing, mortgage lending um, and he's going to he's going to speak specifically about information from his forthcoming article virtually no Negro v veteran could get a loan African American veterans the GI Bill and the NAACP's relentless campaign against re residential segregation from 1914 to 1960. It is unfortunate, but this is another way that fair housing needed to come about, that people that served and are, at, that are part of our greatest generation were denied housing based on the color of their skin. Fortunately, now things are more open and veterans have more opportunities. However, on the other hand, we find many veterans coming back from service in Af Afghanistan and Iraq and they may have some disabilities that may need accommodations in housing. So to the extent that uh, a landlord is unwilling or unable to allow uh, veteran to have grab bars in a bathroom when they might be missing a limb or again as I said access to the unit by way of a ramp when they have a wheelchair that's that's a fair housing situation that needs to be addressed and we don't even think about that being a fair housing problem. Many people don't I think you're right. Now can you quantify that? How often does that happen? You get X number of cases where that happens a month or a year. Do we know? I'm, sh I'm sure that people know um, that work in the enforcement arm and that's why we go to these conferences. They bring up topics that are relevant, that they've had concerns about or that they can quantify and those are the topics that they, they present at the fair housing conferences to help educate um, landlords, um, municipalities, local government officials, everyone. Now that speech will be interesting and is, mm -hmm. do you have any other, uh, that's interesting what he's saying right. about how there was a large segment of people that were, veterans, veterans, that were denied housing for X number of years mm -hmm. and that's, that's, that's pretty interesting. They were unable to get a loan in the neighborhood of their choice. Mm -hmm. So it, it is unfortunate because they did honorably serve and we have folks that honorably serve today again that may need a little help with um, some accommodations to a unit that they're renting and we'd like to see that happen. All right, let's go back to Dorothy, I believe. Dorothy, hello. Hello. Hi, go right ahead, Dorothy. Hi. Hi. Go ahead. What's on your mind? Well, I was wanting to ask about the Section 8 program. I have been signing up every year, and I've been turned down every year since 2013. And I was wondering what could I do, you know, to maybe get in. I have a 17-year-old son, he has ADHD, and I've been trying to get in there. I'm uh, 72 years old, and I've been turned down every year since uh, 2013. All right, good. I'm glad you asked that. I bet a lot of people have that question. What about that? There's, well, as you probably are well aware, if you drive around Nashville, there's a, a large need for affordable, and, and any type of housing, but affordable housing when you're talking about Section 8, affordable housing here in the Nashville area. 
And um, as far as there's a limited, with Section 8, there's just a limited amount of program dollars to assist with rental housing um, payments. But what I can recommend Dorothy check into is tnhousingsearch.org. That's a website that THDA maintains and sponsors, and it provides uh, free rental housing or housing free, no charge, to use for landlords and people looking, tenants looking for housing. It matches them up. You just go in and you select either find rental housing or list rental housing, and you go through the process of searching for housing in by zip code, by city, by nearest street. It, depending on how much you need to pay, you can identify by the amount that you're willing to pay. Bedroom size, bathroom size, pet friendly. If you need reasonable accommodations, that's on there also. So. Okay, so that is a, an engine that, that would help with that. Right. Now, you all administer r r Section 8 in rural communities, so right. not, in, not in Davidson County. Not in Davidson County. How, what is the waiting list like? How long, how long does it take? How tough is it to get Section 8 assistance? It can be, uh, it can take a while. Um, we do have some open waiting lists in some areas of the state. I, I know Murray County is one of them. I'm trying to remember a few others. I wrote them down this morning. Um, but we have opened up the waiting list in a couple of areas in the state, but it's not in the major metropolitan areas like Nashville or Memphis or Knoxville. We don't administer there. And quite frankly, I don't think we have anything in surrounding counties either, Rutherford, Sumner, or anything like that. So, so you actually have to w you have to open up the waiting list. Yes, sir. The waiting lists are closed right now in They're, many cases. Right. We just have so many people on the waiting list right now. Just and what what can be done about that? Is that a, is that federal funding? That's all federal funding. If there were more federal, federal funding, there could be more people served. Right. Exactly. Is there state funding as part of that? No, there's not. So it's all federal funding. Mm -hmm. And there's, I mean, what have you seen over the years? The need just going up? Last five years, what have, what have you seen? Um, it it in increases every year, I would, I would say. It has increased every year since I've been at the agency. I don't, I've never seen a year where it decreased, to be perfectly honest with you. Obviously, the need is more. And we also um, serve a great deal of, of uh, folks that are people with disabilities, seniors, um, single parents with children on our waiting list. But I think the biggest majority of folks on our waiting list needing housing for the Housing Choice Voucher are people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. so, and that is the big area. What I'm hearing you say now, that is the big area. It's not if you're black or um, a religious um, bias anymore, it, or is it? Well, no, I don't. It's I don't more think it about is. disabilities, right? I, I don't. I, I don't think that people recognize that, and that's so. It's more ignorance. No, There's not an intentional. Whereas before, there may have been more of an intentional sort of. I'm not going to rent to this race mm -hmm. or this religion, mm -hmm. and that's what that that speech is going to be about. Now it's more. I didn't know I needed to do that, and as a result, there's a whole group of people that can't rent from me that aren't being served, that don't that have barriers, unnecessary barriers to housing. So if, if I had a disability mm -hmm. and I went to rent a place mm -hmm. and it, it was not accommodating, and let's say the landlord was just the best of intent, just didn't know, you know, is there a penalty for the landlord? And I know you all don't assess penalty, but what happens after that? So the person files, calls you, calls you all. What, what happens next? We would direct them either to uh, the Human Rights Commission West Tennessee, depending on where, where they're calling from, West Tennessee Legal Services or Tennessee Fair Housing Council, and they would talk to those enforcement agencies who are much more helpful in coming to a resolution in a lot of cases. But it is education, mm -hmm. and for the most part it is education. Are you seeing landlords being fined or punished? for not doing these things? Um, I can't say that I see it. I think that 
um, probably people that are more sensitive to reading legal briefs and things are more aware of it. And and once again, like I said, at the at the Fair Housing Matters Conference, there'll be um, several different workshops on tenant landlord complaints, uh, serving people with disabilities, and, and fair housing updates. So more information would be provided then. Um, April is Fair Housing Month, and uh, Governor Housing signed a proclamation earlier that uh, will be, that designates April as Fair Housing Month. So there'll be a lot of fair housing training and education throughout the state starting as early as this coming Friday. Okay, very good. All right, we're going to take a break. If you want to call in, there's a number 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.